Chapter 1. The Tempo I was taught that every beat has a humble beginning. Every musical masterpiece begins with a simple idea. I became obsessed with this idea early on and it kept me from quitting. Knowing this always brought me comfort as an aspiring producer. I think it's because I'm a chronic overthinker. I have a tendency to make things more difficult than they need to be. So when I first began dissecting the elaborate compositions of producers like Dr. Dre, Jay Dilla, Ninth Wonder, Timbaland, The Neptunes, and Organized Noise, I desperately needed to understand that any beat, no matter how complex and intimidating the final product sounds, has to start with something as simple as its tempo. Chapter 2. The Snare The character of your beat is in your snare. J Business. In every single beat I produce, the snare always represents the foundation for the attitude I want to create within that beat. If I want the attitude of my beat to be authoritative and bold, I'll use a heavy snare in a lower tone. If I want my snare to provide a fun and energetic landscape, I'll use a clap or a snap. Every aspect of your snare, from its timing to the amount of reverb you put on it, communicates a different message to your listener. Chapter 3. The Kick The kick is the heartbeat of your drum loop. Awesome. The kick is the often unsung hero of every drum loop. It's like the Napoleon Dynamite of drum loops. What I mean by this is that many producers underestimate the value of their kicks and what they contribute to their beats. But when it comes to hip hop beats, my producer brother Awesome takes a unique perspective on the importance of the kick. He believes that if the kick drum is utilized correctly, it can represent the heartbeat of a drum loop. Chapter four, the swing. Without swing, you have restriction. With restriction, you have no freedom. Without freedom, there is no soul. Captain. If the kick is the heartbeat of a drum loop, then the swing of a beat is its soul. The swing gives us a precious reminder that a human being laid hands to the creation of a beat. The act of swinging an instrument off the grid, of freeing it from the mechanical timing of a metronome, gives the illusion that it was recorded live and was subject to natural human error. The swing evokes an attitude that is the secret sauce of many of your favorite beats. Trying to explain swing to a producer who has no idea what you're talking about is like a woman trying to describe the pains of childbirth to a man. It took me years to understand what swing was and why it was so significant to my beats. We have a beat that is like a railroad track or any straight line, but we don't play the straight line. We suggest this line so that you may hear a bass drum off of the line. And you may think the tempo is staggering, but it's not. Chapter 5. The Hi-Hats The Hi-Hats provide a beat a very special illusion. Salas. Producers, Hi-Hats are the unsung heroes in our beats. A mentor of mine named Salas used to say that Hi-Hats give a special illusion of the true speed of a beat. Ain't that the truth? Think about your favorite trap beat. Compare the energy of the first part of that beat without hi-hats to the eight bar mark when the hi-hats make their appearance. Don't you notice a shift in the momentum? Most listeners haven't the slightest clue why, but producers know how much the simple addition of hi-hats can create a shift in energy. Whether it's the rapid fire hi-hats of producer Sunny Digital or the unpredictable hi-hat rolls of Metro Boomin, the hi-hats give the story of your beat some much needed momentum. Hi-hats are the gorilla glue that keeps the energy of your beat intact. They're like unpredictable slot machines. They keep us on the edge of our seats. Chapter seven, the melody. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. Willy Wonka. When I was younger, I would help my grandmother make her homemade lemon cake from scratch. She showed me a trick her own mother had taught her to make her cakes extra lemony on the inside. Before she applied the glaze, she would use a toothpick to poke around the cake so that the syrup could travel directly to the center. This way, every slice of the cake was sure to be just as lemony as the first. In many ways, I have approached the melody in my beat as the glaze that sweetens the overall production. Since I began making beats, I have always started with the drums, just as a baker starts with the eggs, butter, and cake flour. As soon as I finished cooking up the drums, the melody represented that sweet lemony glaze that I could apply to the outer layer and which would then infuse the whole song. Fittingly, without any traditional music training, 
I found myself doing a lot of poking around on my keyboard in order to find the perfect melodic sweet spot. Chapter 8. The Bass The bass line is the direct vibration of the soul. Yep, from tomorrow yesterday. When I first started making beats, I underestimated the importance of the bass line. My first 10 beats didn't have a single instrument in the sub frequency. I wasn't like most of my testosterone driven peers who were addicted to the low end, but maybe this was why my peers didn't initially feel my beats. As my friend Yep brilliantly points out above, the bass is the direct vibration of the soul. No wonder my peers felt disconnected. The more experienced I became as a producer, the more I realized what the bass line means to a beat, the warmth of wholeness. It warms and amplifies the drums and melody. Symbolically, the bass line was the head nod Professor Morgan gave for my zoo jingle. It was the feeling of my first placement. I'm sure you've had and will keep having your own bass line moments. You know them when you feel them. 